Smoothing models assume that there's no pattern in the data. The first pattern that we'll look at is trends. And in this case, we're going to look at linear trends, meaning a straight line trend. If we look at the data in this graph, we could just take a ruler or a straight edge and simply draw a straight line and use that to predict future values. What we're going to want to do is draw that straight line mathematically. Smoothing models don't do well with this kind of data. For example, here's three different versions of the exponential smoothing model with different values for alpha, with different responsiveness. We can see that the smoothing model always under forecast. It does not predict that trend in the future. It reacts to that. It adjusts its values upward, but always lagging. What we want is a straight line linear trend model, a way to draw a straight line that fits the data and will give us a much better forecast into the future. One way to mathematically draw a straight line through a set of data is simple linear regression. Simple linear regression finds a best fit line to a set of data. And best can be determined in different ways. We'll talk about how linear regression decides what is a best fit line. From algebra, we're all used to the equation y equals mx plus b. So y is our vertical axis and x is our horizontal axis. In forecasting, we're calling t the horizontal axis and a sub t or f sub t the vertical axis. We'll first look at regression using the y equals mx plus b formula and then apply it to our forecasting. It's just a change in notation. In regression, m is the key parameter. m is the slope of the line or the rise over the run and tells us if there's a relationship between the data in the x-axis and the y-axis. If the slope is zero, it says there's no relationship. If m is positive, it says that the data has a relationship, that as x gets bigger, y gets bigger. If the slope is negative, it says it's an inverse relationship. As x gets bigger, y gets smaller. So when we look at forecasting, the slope tells us if it's positive, and we're talking about sales, then sales are increasing. If m or the slope is negative, and we're talking about forecasting, sales are decreasing. B is merely an anchor point. It tells us where we hit the y-axis. So yes, it's important in terms of forecasting the graph, but the slope is the key. The slope tells us if there is a trend. If the slope is zero or nearly zero, then we really don't have a linear trend, and regression is not going to do very much for us in terms of predicting results. Simple linear regression defines a best line as one that minimizes the squared errors. So we look at this vertical distance between our forecast value, our regression line, and the actual data, we take those numbers and square them. Regression will give us the line that minimizes the total sum of those squared errors. Minimizing the squared error is very useful for statistical analysis to determine if we really have a good relationship or not, but it can create problems in forecasting. Suppose our next data point is down here. The current line and that data point are quite a bit apart. So if we take this distance and square it, it's going to have a big impact. And what's going to happen is the regression line is going to be skewed quite a bit for that one data point. This one data point, again, can be an outlier. So outliers, when we're using linear regression, can really change the nature of our forecast line and may lead us to make a mistake. The formulas for the slope and the intercept are given below. They may look a little imposing, but once we lay the data out on the table, they're quite simple. The x values and the y values first are multiplied together and summed up. n is how many data points we have. In other words, how many historic values do we have to initialize the model? So if we have six data points, n is six. When we put a bar above a variable, it means average, so we have y average values, the average of the y values, and x bar is the average of the x values. Here we're squaring the numbers first and then summing them. And again in the bottom we're taking the average value of x and squaring it multiplying by n. This formula can be complicated to use with a calculator. Frequently students make mistakes with this 
and have problems entering it, especially in the TI scientific calculators. So as we go through this, it's important to estimate the value of m before we start to recognize when we make a mistake. Frequently, students will take the sum of the xy and then subtract off these two terms and finally subtract this off of the end if they don't get their parentheses right with their scientific calculator. That will give you a dramatically different answer than the correct one. So estimating the slope and the intercept ahead of time is useful in making sure that you're not making a mathematical or calculation mistake. Also note that the slope is used in the formula for the intercept. So if the slope is incorrect, the intercept will also be incorrect. Here's a sample problem. So we have six values of sales data. So n is going to be equal to 6. And we want to use regression to fit a line to this data and then extrapolate that and use this for the forecast. So this is where we're going to be forecasting. And with the six data values, we want to find the best fitting line. First, we want to estimate the slope and the intercept. If we just take this line and draw back to the y-axis, we get an estimate that b is approximately equal to 10. We don't need to be super accurate with these estimates because if we make a mistake, it will usually be very obvious. Next, to look at the slope, we can look at the difference between each pair of values. So this increased by 6. Between week 2 and 3, it increased by 3. Here we have 5. Here we have 7. And here we have 7. So it looks like the average change per week is somewhere in the 5 to 7 range. So we might say that the slope is probably around 6. Those are close enough to get a good estimate. When we're done, we'll see if our 10 and 6 values are close. Again, if we make a mistake, the results are going to be dramatically off and it should be obvious to us. To calculate slope and intercept using the formulas given, it's useful to set up a table. So our periods, t, are our x values using the y equals mx plus b formula. Our sales values, our a sub t, is the y values. Then we're going to take x squares. We're just going to take the x value and square it. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, and so on. For the xy column, we simply take the x value times the y value. So 1 times 18 is 18. 2 times 24 is 48, and so on. Next, we sum. So the first row is the sum. The next row is the average. So this is equal to x bar. This is equal to y bar. This is equal to the sum of the x squareds. And this is equal to the sum of the xy. And with these four values, we can now use the formulas to calculate the slope and intercept. The slope, we're going to take the sum of the xy, put it here, n is equal 6 because there are 6 data values. We multiply that by y bar and by x bar. And what I like to do is calculate the numerator first and lay the equation out, then calculate the denominator so I can check my work, unless I'm using a spreadsheet, which we'll look at how much easier that is. Sum of the x squareds is 91. Again, n is also 6 times x bar, which is 3.5 squared, gives us 17.5 in the denominator, and our slope is calculated as 5.4. That slope is used in the formula for b when we get the value of 12. So our regression results gives us 5.4 for the slope versus our estimate of 6. That's very close, certainly close enough to say we probably didn't make any mistakes in the math. The intercept, we had 12 from regression versus 10, which was our estimate. So we should be pretty confident that we did the regression formula correctly. Another way to evaluate the results is to use the regression line and compare it to our actual data. So the y equals mx plus b, m the slope is 5.4, the x values are just the weak values. The intercept is 12. so for our first week of sales, the regression equation gives a value of 
17.4 versus 18. And so we'll plot these forecasted values. We're incrementing the week. So we're adding an extra 5.4 units of sales increase per week based on the regression line. That gives us the red line in the graph compared to the sales values that we plotted. And the match is quite close. This is certainly closer than we would expect with real data. But again, this is a classroom example. With regression, we're taking a line that best fits these six data points in terms of the squared errors. We can then use this regression line to forecast values into the future. Mathematically, we drew a straight line through our data and extended it out so we can use regression as a forecasting method. Here's another example where we can use regression. To estimate the slope and the intercept, let's look at the slope first. The difference between each data point each week of sales, for it's 7, here it's 5, here it's 4, here it's 11. So let's say somewhere 9. Again, we don't have to be super precise, just get a ballpark figure, because if we make a mistake, it's going to be a very dramatic mistake. If our slope is 9, then the intercept is where we're going to hit the axis in week 0. So we would take 9 off of the 150, would give us 141 for the intercept. So we're expecting a slope about 9 and an intercept of 141. And we set up our table for our x values or our t periods, our actual values are the y's, get our x squared column and our xy column, sum and average the x and the y. We have the values we need for the regression equation. We have our x bar, our y bar, our sum of the x squared, and the sum of the xy. We plug those into the regression formula. Again, n is 5 in this case because we only have 5 data values. Otherwise, everything is the same. We get a slope of 6.3 versus 9. We estimate it a little high, but we're in the ballpark here, so we should be pretty confident that we didn't make a mistake. If we made a mistake, it's not too dramatic. Our intercept, we guessed 141 versus 143.5. So the results look pretty good. If we plot our regression values, which is the red line, versus our sales values, we can see the fit, again, is quite good. And we can then use this regression line to forecast the trend, a linear straight line trend, into the future. Excel can provide regression results in a couple of ways. The analysis tool pack is a very detailed statistical package, which includes extensive regression analysis tools. One of the problems is it gives us a lot of data that we may not be interested in. This data, however, is quite useful. The R-squared value in regression tells us how well we explain our data with the regression line. It means what percentage of the error is explained by regression, and here the R-squared is quite high. Perfect regression gives you an R-squared value of 1, so we are very close to that. Again, we are looking at data that is made up for the classroom. Real life data, the R squared is likely to be much lower. We also do a significant test of the model using ANOVA. And tucked away in the bottom are the slope and intercept values. So this is a very good detailed statistical package. But for forecasting, it's not really practical to use. Fortunately, Excel comes with a slope and intercept function. So to get the slope for a set of data, you just type equals slope, give the range of the y values, then the range of the x values. So in this example, here's the range of the y values, here's the range of the x values. So you can see in this example, if we type equals slope for B26 to B30, comma A26 to A30, we're going to get the slope value same as with the regression equation. Similarly, the intercept formula works the same way, so we can get the intercept value very easily. And so these functions are very useful for doing simple forecasting. To see how the slope and intercept formulas work in Excel, we'll take the data from the last problem. And in cell B13, we'll type slope equals and B14 will type intercept equals. And then in the cell C13, we'll put the actual formula equals slope 
parentheses, we'll highlight the y values, comma, highlight the x values, add the other parentheses, and we have the slope value. Similarly, we'll type equals intercept, highlight the y values, comma, highlight the x values. Close parentheses, there we go. We can also tell Excel to ignore the error on the page that it thinks exists, not really an error. Now that we have these, we can actually do the forecast. So in the first cell, we're gonna type equals the intercept value, and we'll want to use the F4 key on a Windows computer or the Command T on a Mac to put the dollar signs in the cell reference to make it an absolute reference. We always want it to refer to that cell when we copy the formula down for the 10 weeks. We're going to take the intercept plus the week. We don't want dollar signs in that. We want that to be a relative reference. We want that to move down as we copy the formula down and multiply it by the slope, which we also want as an absolute reference. So dollar signs on the slope and intercept. That gives us our first forecast value, and we can just drag that down. And we have the first five periods where we can compare the forecast to the actual sales, and then week six through 10 are an actual forecast. We can graph this as well to see how it's working. Highlight all the data, insert, select a line chart, We'll do the 2D line chart and move it into an easier to see position, make it a little bit bigger. We got to adjust the data. We can select on the data. We don't want to see the weeks forecast, so we'll drop that. But we do want the weeks to be the labels for the x-axis. So we'll highlight this. And there we go. It's kind of hard to see still. Part of that is because the scale of the graph starts at zero, and really we need it, say, at 140. So we can click on the graph axis on the values, right-click on them, and go to Format Axis. And we can just set the minimum value at 140 rather than the zero that it had. That's going to make it a little bit easier to see. The other thing that we can do is select the particular line of the actual sales. It's more commonly shown as markers rather than a line. So let's go over in the format data series. It's not obvious that the paint can is what we want to select. We want to turn off the line, switch over to the marker, and expand the marker options. Let's use a square. Let's make it a little bit bigger. We can pick a different color if we like. We can pick red for the border and also red for the fill. And now it's a little easier to see our graph, to see the actual data points we fit with regression line and then the forecast in the future. And again, you can change the size on the font and put a good title in, put access titles, but that's how we can use the slope and intersect functions in Excel.